And welcome back to Career Build Series, episode 133. So, I had a PC crash. Um, my PC's been acting up with some Windows 11 update, and so it was either that or Stormworks. Um, I started the episode 133. I went through, I, um, I'll, I'll go through step by step how I rescued Rijo, which I did successfully. And so, um, essentially, Rijo, what happened, what caused the crash was when I revived, there were three people laying on the ground uh, incapacitated. And so I, I revived one of them. And when they popped up, their feet glitched into the floor. And when their feet glitched into the floor, it caused the floor block to break. And you had two collision meshes going between one another, which caused the boat to roll. And it happened to break the door. Uh, I set up Rigeau with a system where it automatically will shut that door when water gets in. So if you forget to close the door, if the door is open, it closes it. And then if there's water inside the interior compartment, it automatically starts to pump it out. And so the problem was with the door broken, that wouldn't happen. So I went back and I started getting ready to take care of it. So I first thing I did was I, I, I swam down into the compartment and I grabbed the um, scuba tank. That gave me enough oxygen that I could um, I could breathe underwater and do some work. The battery was dead because the starters kept trying to go, and so that killed the battery. Very quickly killed the backup battery. And so what I did was I grabbed the underwater repair torch, which was in Vergeau, and I repaired all the damage. That allowed me to close the door. Now with the door closed, I just waited, and eventually it pumped out. The problem was the weight of the players, those uh, NPC characters inside, was enough to cause it so that, uh, because they're all dead laying upside down on the roof, uh, Vrigio wouldn't rotate. So I, I just quickly extricated them, and then it auto-rotated. I was able to go back to shore. They all died. I threw them in. They were fish food. Um, they died to the glitch, not to my negligence. Uh, one of the issues, one of the reasons why we had so many issues with keeping them alive was a heater. So I put a heater in Anyways, went and did another mission that went successfully with the new Vigio with the heater. And then just as I was getting back to the workbench, it crashed my PC. And with OBS, it crashes out the video and I can't do anything with it. And so I said, you know what? Um, I'll just uh, explain to people what happened. Um, I already updated Rijo, and this video, instead of going back and harping on that, let's do something new. So I'm in my test world, so this is my creative world. So, uh, do a little bit of a reveal here. So, I have come up with a name for the home ship. I've called it the home ship, just as that was its purpose. It was a home, a ship that would be our uh, home base. And so I came up with a name a while ago. I tend to go with, with uh, Greek mythology. Um, for my names, that's where Vigio came from. Katie did, did not come from Greek mythology, but um, the home ship will. So you will see when I load it up what the new name is. And we're going to work on the home ship some. So let's spawn it in, do a big reveal. And the name of the once called home ship is the Triton. So let's go over who Triton, the, myth the mythological Triton was. So, um, uh, Triton is Greek god of the sea, the son of Poseidon and Amphrodite, god and goddess of the sea, respectively. Triton lived with his parents in a golden palace on the bottom of the sea. Later, he was often just depicted as having a conch shell. He would blow like a trumpet. So I, I was thinking I might put a conch shell on there at some point. Um, Triton is usually represented as a merman with the upper body of a human and the tail and uh, tailed lower body of a fish. At some time during the Greek and Roman era, Triton became a generic term for merman, mermen, in art and literature. In English literature, Triton is portrayed as the messenger or herald for the god Poseidon. So Triton, uh, and we won't go into that anymore. So that's the new name of the home ship is Triton. So uh, I think that looks good. That's the same paint job. I, I went in there and I, I hand corrected a lot of that. I should put a line under it or something, um, but we're going to work in the home ship a little bit. I want to get this up to snuff and operational so that we can use this. This was the whole reason why I started the career build series, was to get in and operate the home ship. And so presently, you see the crane's kind of dangling. That's because we need infinite electricity. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start working on this. I want to get this up to snuff and up to quality 
Um, most of the systems are in place, so let's start with the tour. I've gone, I've done tours of this before, but let's start with a tour. I'll talk about the purpose of the ship. So we have a rescue boat in the back. This actually holds 10 people. It's reasonably capable. This could use a lot of work. And again, we learn what our vehicles need in career. So we'll modify this some more in career. Um, under here, you can also park a land vehicle. Um, I'm also going to put a winch in here at some point so we can do some towing missions. That's why the back is open here for a cable. Again, uh, pulleys, please, de please, Dev. And so as you can see here, we have some uh, connectors in the floor. This allows us to stack five containers, five instead of six, because the crane occupies the center space. I like this crane, very functional. I may put a different crane on here now that I really enjoy my tower crane, but I'm not sure. This one works really well. I can load from the dock and have this not, almost not tip at all. I have two access ports. As you can see, these can actually be picked up by the crane. Uh, this one's a hangar. This one is our engine room. So let's go ahead and let's try to, there's a lot to explain. So this is a lifeboat. This unfortunately is not as utilitarian as I would like because um, if you get any water in here, uh, these doors don't auto shut. So I kind of need a system like I have on Vigio. Um Unfortunately, I need a, um, in order for that to work, I need electric hatch. So I might switch this one out for an electric hatch and then kind of cheat my way in the seat. Um, and that way, you know, when you, uh, you know, when the water gets in here, we'll auto shut the doors. As you can see, we have a large capacity here. We have one, two, three, four, eight seats in here, plus we have a driver's seat. And so this is our, um, this is our uh, lifeboat. So this can go out in theoretically heavier seas, but until I really kind of um, put an electric hatch that auto closes there, this, this can flood. So we have to be careful. I have to do some testing on that. Other side, we have the man overboard boat. Uh, one of the things I added on here are single button um, launch mechanisms. So they're essentially, I've tested these, they work well. As you can see, I can single button launch this one, single button launch this one. You probably recognize this one. This is what I just dumped on our home base. Um, sometimes it sticks. But that's just a little electric uh, man overboard boat. Man overboard boats designed to be a very quick boat. And again, I'm not, my expertise is not in. Um, in anything maritime, so if anyone has expertise in this field and would like to correct me, uh, please do. Um, so there's a little man overboard boat, so you want it kind of center of the ship from what I've heard. Um, that way if somebody falls over, you can very quickly launch this boat. It's not designed really for, you know, major rescues. It's if somebody falls overboard, you would jump on this really quick and go get them so they don't drown. Lifeboat, again, I don't know, these these were not sticking before, so I, you know, oh, I know what it is. The rope stretch um, update. These were all set so that they perfectly align. Um, and now that we have that new rope stretch, that's they're going to misbehave. So that's fine. I could fix that. But um, you know, we have a lifeboat. We have uh, the man over on the other side, and this will not uh, this will not sit properly. It might sit backwards. Let me see. It might sit backwards. Yeah, it's symmetrical. It sits backwards. Fine. Okay. Yep, that actually sits all right backwards, so don't really care. All right, in here, um, so let's look at the crane. So we have a LaBear style crane here. Need to do some work on this. Um, I might fake and have it have pistons. The real one that I was kind of basing this off of had pistons. Um, I want to tighten up the lettering on this a little bit. Um, we'll fake some pistons on this. Uh, currently, it's ca it's faked cable. It's actually these pivots turning it. Uh, it has a hard boom that automatically, be, with a tilt sensor, it automatically always keeps this pointing straight down. And then it has some modules. For example, this is the winch module. So you'd come in here. You can um, actively detach these. You can carry them around. Uh, if I can grab it. There we go. As you can see, I can pick it up and carry it, or I can reattach it. And uh, that allows us to store some uh, modules for this in here. So I can put some modules on the end here and operate that. This here is a module that you can attach to this uh, boom arm. This is how we'd actually load containers. This expands. We can load containers on the deck. All right, so next, uh, these two doors are symmetrical. They're the same thing. Uh, we'll just go in here. All right, and on this deck, as you can see, there's that symmetrical door. This is the main living floor. So we have staterooms. Uh, staterooms are pretty much identical, double beds with a little uh, seating station, and these will be up updated as, as you know, I feel like it as need be. Those are not really 
um, all that necessary. They look pretty much the same. So we have uh, the real, you know, the ship that this is based off of was a fisheries research vessel. It had a crew of like 24, uh, which makes sense for a research vessel. Um, this is not going to be a research vessel, so I kind of have a small crew in here. So we have, I believe, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And as you can see, they're all just pretty much the same. Uh, these two are the last two uh, crew quarters here. And then we have, uh, coming in here, uh, we have a galley and a kitchen. As you can see, these are off the Damon uh, 2111. They, it's nice to be able to just kind of grab that and stick it in there. I don't know what I'm going to do with this room yet here. Um, could be like a meeting room. All right, so uh, the doorways, as you can see, we have staircases, so this goes down, arrow sh showing down. Let's go ahead and go down. Um, we'll go down our next level. So you follow the arrows, and it'll tell you where you're going. All right, and let's go ahead. So we're down on the uh, lowermost floor. So this is going to be systems in here. Uh, this is actually the bilge system. It's all plumbed in. It's just sitting down here, and eventually I'll move the controllers upstairs. Uh, but we have... So let's kind of talk about how, uh, when I get back on the workbench, I'll show you, you know, some of my thoughts on how you should build a ship. And this is based off, you know, what I, the research I've done for real ships. Up here is kind of a cool area. It's kind of a little spooky cool area. This is your anchor lockers. Now, they're not completed by any stretch of the imagination. As you can see, it's just crap in here. I'm going to put, end up putting a picture um, to kind of make it be like a, just a picture of a chain of kind of a dark enclosed space. And so you have to be very careful in enclosed spaces and ships, uh, especially the anchor lockers is my understanding. You know, the anchor chain oxidizes. So you have a chemical reaction where the oxygen is essentially burning the, um, the steel in this case. And what it's doing is it's using up the oxygen uh, to make oxides. And so it's taking the oxygen out, and it's also producing some other gases. And so you have an enclosed space, and so what's happening is it's essentially using, at the very least, using up all the oxygen in this room. And so what you've had is you've had people crawl into these enclosed spaces and die because the first person goes in, right, and you can't tell there's no oxygen in there, and you go in there and you pass out. Well, then the second person tries to go and rescue you, they pass out third person. They literally had somebody, they sent in five people, and then finally they got a crew in with some oxygen masks, and they end up recovering bodies, you know, because that's how dangerous it is. So I'm going to put some caution warning in closed space. I'm going to put, like, a vent thing, and so essentially you'll press a button. It will say, um, you know, it'll take, like, say, two minutes, and you'll hear maybe a whirring noise of essentially a pump that's, you know, uh, pumping oxygen into the space, and then this will unlock, and you can just look in there, essentially. So just kind of a little bit of RP, kind of cool. So that's up there in the anchor lockers. Uh, let's go in here. This next space is kind of cool. This is the hangar. So um, I told you about this panel here. Let's go up. So I can pull this panel, and so I can drop the panel and pull it with the crane and just lay it on the deck. And we can actually load things in here. We can load vehicles. That uh, container mover is going to go in here. Uh, put a bunch of stuff in here, which is kind of cool. And you see these? These are the two staircases uh, to get down to our man overboard boat and our lifeboat, respectively. Coming to the back here, we have our engineering section, main motors. So we have two of my uh, branded Pat diesels. These are eight-cylinder straight eights. Um, very nice and powerful. These are good. Um, we have our battery bank here. I'm going to go up here. This is going to be our engineering control station, so sit here and we'll be able to do uh you know we'll select our batteries we'll select our generators on um can set up our harbor generator or short power we'll have some readouts as you can see battery banks and then i need to fill out the rest of the gauges but i want to get this up and running soon where i can come down here get the ship prime just like the t800 i want to come down to engineering get it set up and then we can control the rest from the bridge all right and as you can see, we have our amber lighting in here. And on the other side here is going to be our breaker room. As you can see, I already started putting in relays and breakers. Um, you know, very little is actually connected at the time. This is this is going to be one of the things I'm going to work on here is getting... So essentially, I want an essentials panel. These are the things that always need to be on. And then I'm going to have a non-essentials panel. I don't know if they actually do this in ships. They do this in aircraft. We'll have an essentials bus. We'll have a non-essentials bus. 
And so essentials are the things you absolutely need, and non-essentials are like the dishwasher, the washing machine. And so if you're having a power problem, you can shut off the dishwasher and the washing machine. You don't need those. Um, the essentials panel you do need, and very much in a, an emergency would you shut things off. Like in an emergency, yeah, you can lose your nav lights, you know, stuff like that. Uh, we have our main power generation, as I've seen in many real ships, off of our main diesels. This is how we're going to be producing our main power. Um, some people will say, why didn't you put large generators in there? I don't need them. Um, I would I would put them in there if I had the power need, but I've run these. This makes more than enough electricity that I need. Um, up here, I may still do it. I started by faking a... Um, I, st I actually kind of might have a way I think I can do this to make it work. I don't want to add a ton of pivots, but um, I... I think I can fake a linkage, uh, a tie rod system for the rudders. So it looks like, so in real life what you would do is you would have, um, you essentially have your turnbuckle up here for, say, your uh, port rudder. You'd have your turnbuckle over here for your, um, my terminology might be wrong, but your uh, for your starboard rudder. And then you would have a hydraulic cylinder, and you have a tie rod. And so the hydraulic cylinder would essentially move one rudder. And then you have a tie rod which connects the two rudders together. So if the port rudder is moving via the hydraulic cylinder, the tie rod pushes on the starboard rudder and makes that one move as well. And that's actually how steering in a lot of vehicles works. So that's how steering in cars works and trucks. For example, in, in the Mac Pinnacle that I drive, the uh, steering box is on the driver's side. The shaft comes down from the steering wheel into the steering box. And then you have um, the uh, pitman arm which moves back and forth. It converts the rotational movement of the steering column to uh, forward-back movement. Then you have a drag link, which is just a link. It's a, a long piece of steel. Connects from that pitman arm to the uh, driver's side uh, steering wheel, uh, steering tire. And uh, then you have a tie rod that ties the uh, driver's wheel to the uh, passenger wheel. And that's how you steer. And the same thing is done with rudders. So I'm going to probably fake that. I also want to put a harbor generator up here. So I might put two. I'm not sure. I might put two smaller ones. But essentially a harbor generator is a generator. Um, again, as the name states, if you're sitting in a harbor, you don't want to be burning up your, you know, you don't want to be running your huge diesels to make electricity. You want to have something small. You don't need to be burning all that diesel. Now, Let's talk about fuel burn. We're burning about 7 liters per second per side. So we're talking 14 liters per second. Uh, let's let's figure this out here. So uh, this is all by memory. So it could have changed if they changed anything. So 14 times 60, that's uh, 840 liters per minute times um, 60. That's uh, 50,000 liters per hour. Okay. So, um, you know, I did some profitability checks on this. We can make good profit on this ship, um, even at that. So, we're, you know, we're going to be burning 50,000 liters per hour. That's about, let's say, $50,000 per hour it will cost us to run this ship at max thrust, okay? So we need to make profit with this. Um, and we need to move places with purpose. And this is one of the things why I was saying we need a lot of money is if we're going to be burning 50,000, you know, uh, dollars an hour we need to make sure that our hours are, are making sense and so for example to go up to the arctic let's say we can get five containers on deck right that um are worth thirty thousand that's a hundred and fifty thousand dollars worth of containers so if we uh let's see uh it's 45 nautical miles to the arctic so let's say it's two and a half um it probably take us two and a half hours. This this tops out around 21 knots, and especially if we're going into colder water, we can maintain 21 knots without overheating. Uh, it has automatic overheat protection already, and it drops us down to 20 knots. So we only lose about uh, I think it's half a knot of speed um, if we have with overheat protection. So we don't lose a lot of speed. So let's say we're doing 20 knots. It's 45 nautical miles up there. So. Uh, 45 divided by 20, that's going to be 2.25 hours. So let's say two and a half hours. Okay, so two. So let's say um, 2.5 times 50,000 liters is going to be about $100,000 for us to go from here at Spy Cakes up to the Arctic. Is that profitable? Absolutely. 
uh, we're running five containers, right? Five containers is going to net us 150,000. We make a profit of 50,000 to go up to the Arctic. Is it the most profitable thing in the world? Absolutely not. You know, running running oil is always going to be the most profitable. And guess what? I don't care what the most profitable is. I've never enjoyed meta gameplay. I like to do what I want to do. And so this is this can be a money maker. It can also be a money pit and a money burner. All right. So we need to keep that in mind. So one of the benefits of the home ship is because it can hold all those rescue vehicles, because this already has a intricate autopilot system, it allows me to put this on autopilot. So let's say we leave spy cakes. We go to we grab all the containers we can. What is all this green business? Oh, I'm in my I'm in here. Okay. I don't even know what this is. Is this new? Safe zone? What's all this nonsense? I don't know. Um, I have natural disaster turn on this world. Anyways, so let's say we grab three um, three containers for BVG in the Arctic. We head over to Komodo. We grab two more. We head up. Uh, and So we'd fill. So what we would do is I would grab three for the Arctic. I would grab two for Komodo. We have five. I'd head over here. I'd take the two for Komodo. I'd unload them at Komodo. That would make us a little bit of money, maybe 4000 We should be able to get there in, oh, I don't know, let's say... Let's say a third of an hour. Okay, that's 20 minutes. All right, so what's this going to take? Uh, it won't take us that long to get there, but let's say it took us a third of an hour to get over to Komodo. All right, so that's a third of 50,000. So um, so let's say that's 33%. So 10% is 5,000. That's 15,000. So we're going to drop off two containers. That will probably net us at most 6,000. So we've lost... I'd say we're probably realistically seven or eight thousand dollars to go here. Not a big deal because what we're doing is that's just offsetting costs. We're then going to pick up two more containers for BVG. All right, and so we pick up two containers. We're going to be shut down, so we're not burning money while we're sitting there. A little bit of harbor generator, but that's very little money. And then we're going to head up to the Arctic. We head up. We're on autopilot the whole time. Okay, so as we're cruising up on autopilot, we're going to get a mission. Mission over here says rescue five people. We're going to leave the Triton on autopilot going up to the Arctic, and we're going to take Katie Did, for example, or one of the small boats, and we're going to go and fly into a mission. We're going to do the mission. We're going to come down, drop people off the hospital. We're going to come back up, and we're going to reconnect with Triton. And while we were off doing a mission, Triton is still steaming up to the Arctic. And we do our mission. Let's say this mission nets us 15000 Well, that's adding to our profit on the way up to the Arctic. We head back up to Triton. We reconnect with Triton. We're heading back up again. Boom, we get a mission up here. Take Katie did or a boat. We head up, do the mission. There's, let's say, another fifteen grand. let us say it's up here now. So we're going to do missions as Triton is moving. And that's why we call it the home ship, is its home base. We're going to go back and forth, and we're going to do that. So it's going to steam all the way up here. Now, the benefit of Triton's autopilot is I can go in here and I can pick a route through all of the icebergs. And so I can leave this on autopilot and have it stop itself right here. Now I'm going to add a station keeping system just like I have on Katie did. And that's going to allow Triton to sit in position. So I'll set that up so that it um, maybe after the autopilot reaches its location it will automatically station keep there. And if we're off doing a mission We'll come back, and Triton will be sitting there waiting for us. We'll bring it in. We'll manually dock. We'll offload our five containers. And not only did we make 50000 profit off of containers, we also made um, all the profit as we were doing missions along the way. So this is going to make this a nice and profitable ship. And so if you build a ship properly, you should have it profitable at all times. Um, but guess what? I don't mind if we burn some money on things. I want to have fun, and we might do some missions that burn some money and cost us money. That's fine. All right, so that's our engineering section. Still needs a lot of work, as you can see, but the ship is close to being functional. And that was, um, you know, I've been kind of teasing this ship coming out for a while. Um, it requires some stuff to get it up and running. And a lot of that's going to be electrical. Just once the electrical is up and running, we are good to go. I have infinite electricity on now, but really not that much to get it going. So this is kind of the uh, hangout room. This is a communal room. It's between the living deck and it's... Uh, below the uh, main, uh, below the bridge. And so, you know, you'd have your living quarters here, people sleeping, and then they want to come up and watch TV. They come up here, play games. I'm going to swap these out. I don't want the uh, loss of frames. I'm really, uh, I forget who created this, um, but I'm going to end up um, 
taking it off anyways. It's kind of cool, but I'm not going to really use it much. So I think I'm just going to do paint blocks and paint in a um, a pool table. This is this is checkers or chess. Um, and so the, uh, you know, so I'm, I think I'm going to get rid of these and just kind of fake them. This TV is a real uh, monitor. That's going to be faked. Um, so this is going to be just kind of a living quarter. So it's going to have some seating places, some bookshelves, things like that. Um, you know, to kind of make it a cool little uh, living space. So we'll come out here. These are my anchors. These are actually kind of cool. These are based off tank tracks, and they um, actually rotate. So it kind of looks like chains going down for the anchors. Um, these are currently just winches for the um, tie-downs. So walk around here, kind of see where we are. We're up here behind the crane. Have our stacks. And we'll go ahead and go back in. And we'll go up to our last level here. So... We'll follow the arrow again. That's up. And we'll head on up into the bridge. So we're in the bridge here. Uh, as you can see, the bridge has the... You know, pretty much I try to set my build up to get, get it working in the world as quickly as possible before I just start doing too much detail. We're there. Everything's working except the electricity. You can see I have crap all over the ground, just getting things done. So we'll kind of build some of this together as we go. Uh, but this is up and running. And so let's go out the sides here. These are uh, lifeboats. These are the kind of lifeboats you would kick off and they'd inflate. One on either side. There's actually, I think, four on the real one, but um, I can't make them small enough to look right. All right, and so we can walk all the way around here, kind of visualize what we're doing here. And let's go ahead. I'm just going to fly up to the um, up here. And we have our LIDAR. We have some radars. We have a... Um, uh, I don't know if that's stabilized or not. We have our mast. Our mast tilts, so our mast will tilt down. This allows us to go under the rail, under the rail, uh, the railway system uh, without having to duck. These are going to be, um, or they may even be hooked up to my same system as the Damon 2111, so I can sit in that seat and pretty much do everything. So I can control these water cannons. Those are water cannons. So that's kind of what's going on there. The lighting system's already in. Most of that's in. So let's take this for a quick little run here, all right? Um, I haven't run this in a while, so it might take me a second. All right, so we sit in our seat. Everything comes on. We have a radar. Um, a lot of the stuff is not mine. These screens are not mine. They'll all be credited. Um, radar is not mine. This compass is not mine. I'm gonna Now that I've kind of dipped my toe a little bit in XML, I'm going to do some XML on these screens for some data. Um, I can go through here with my cameras. Let's see, this is in the deck. I, I hid some stuff in the deck. I had a lot of stuff sitting on top, and so I just hid it inside. That's why that's in there. Um, and then I can switch to my cameras. So that's camera two. Camera two is inside, I think. Camera th three is inside. Camera four is inside. Camera five is that one we were looking at. So as you can see, I can look up. I can rotate this camera 360. As you can see, uh, night vision, all the, all the works, zooms, all that good stuff. Uh, six. So uh, also, I'm going to put the um, water cannons on there. So we have radar, lidar. Again, same system as you probably saw on um, the 800. All right. Uh, this is going to be. This is all my engine stuff here. I'm going to probably change that over to Lua. Started playing with Lua a little bit. I'll start doing some more Lua. I think with this. Um, you notice a lot of this is um, looks familiar. I'm gonna read. I'm gonna update it, kind of make it function like I want it to. Uh, these are the anchors. Let me kind of show you the anchors. I think the anchors are cool. It's kind of hard for me to see sitting down. So let's watch the anchors. So that's my port anchor. As you can see, looks like it's feeding out chain. And let me grab. Let me go outside. Oh come on, behave yourself. And you see, it feeds my anchor down. And see the anchor is set. Okay, we're going to bring it up. And let's go ahead and look. You can see it's moving like anchor chain there. Looks like an anchor chain is moving. And this will go ahead and suck up our anchor. And so this is all an automated system. As you can see, the, um, the mag all will automatically shut itself off. So that's kind of a cool system, as you can see there. And that will attach the hull um, when it needs to. But that's kind of cool. I enjoy that. Um, you see our radars are turning there. Um, our LIDAR is turning. So big fun there. 
Um, let's see what else we have here. That's uh, starboard anchor. We can do that. That's how much anchor chain we have. Our anchor sets, that's nothing right now. I don't know what that is. Um, yep, so I have to go through this. Here we have uh, stern thrusters. We have bow thrusters. Uh, what I'm going to end up doing is I'm trying to decide how to do station keeping properly. So what I might do is that's my stern thruster. Um, here is my bow thruster. My bow thruster is actually in the hull, as you can see there, kind of. And so what I want to do is, with station keeping, I'm going to need to add on maybe some electric motors. Um, I need to have one forward backwards, and I need to have uh, them left right as well. So we have our stern thrusters, we have our bow thrusters. Um, I could do it with the main engines, but again, we burn a lot of a lot of fuel, so I don't want to do too much. So let's go ahead and start up our diesels. Okay, so we're up and running. Uh, let's go ahead and let's go bow thruster to the right. Let's go ahead and go stern thruster to the right. And as you can see, we're starting to um, translate right. You'll see this is turning. The one in the bow, you can just barely see that one's turning. So we have really good maneuverability here. And so I'm going to up my stern thruster. The bow thruster is a lot uh, stronger. And I think it's because because the bow is narrower. Just has a lot less mass to move, I think. So um, I might put in a correction factor so that you can kind of set them to the same, so that they're not, you know, I'm not overturning. But so essentially, what will happen with the um, station keeping system is uh, just like what the KD did. You know, where the KD did rolls for say the x-axis, the bow and stern thrusters will essentially push us port starboard for the x-axis. The y-axis will most likely be some more electric uh, uh, props that will push us forward and backwards, and that will allow us to stay in one position. We can also drop an anchor, but if we're way out in the middle of the ocean with, you know, very heavy seas, we're not going to be able to do that. All right, so let's go ahead and let's get uh, moving with our motors here. So let's zero our bow thrusters, and um, I'm going to switch this up so it's the same control scheme as kind of Rigeau with the WSAD up, down, left, right. And so let's start turning out here. And so we'll go. Uh, we'll go one. Uh, that's just the anchors attaching to the um, hull. And I think something. Okay, there it is. It just took me a while to get moving. So as you can see, um, my starboard is not moving yet. So that needs some work. But we're starting to turn out. So let's go up. Oh, the engine's not on. Let me see. Uh, starboard RPM is 145. Alright. Oh, I think I... Something happened where this, um... It was one of the updates, I think. It got... It was broken, so I need to control it. So this is also the, uh, thrust system that I'm going to be putting on the T-800, but I need to finish this up. We getting thrust now? Yeah. Okay. So I was having negative thrust issues on starboard, but let's go and I'll kind of show you the. Um, so when I have a large ship like this, I do sticky rudders. So as you can see, I have a rudder indicator. Um, that's showing my rudder position, and I can, uh, you know, I manually do it uh, like this. And so it's sticky rudder. Uh, that because this takes a long time to turn. And so let's go ahead, let's sync up our thrust. Again, I should put it as desync. I'll do that when I um, kind of update it to the um, latest um, methodology I use. Now let's start, uh, I'll show you some full speed on this sucker. So I tend to go about 20% faster than what a real, what the real vessel that something's based off of, if I base it off of something. That gives me a little bit more functionality in game. All right, so we're up here, um, we should reach about 20 knots. We're uh, about 21 knots. We're close right now. So as you can see, Triton is a pretty fast beast. Um, 20 knots is very respectable. Uh, that hits the Arctic in, you know, uh, two and a quarter hours, let's say two and a half hours. And again, it was built this way to be profitable. If I'm going to be burning as much fuel as I'm be burning, I need to have opportunities to get um, that money back, essentially. Temperature, it has automatic temperature protection. As you see, these will come up. Um, they will not overheat. They'll automatically control it, and we'll still be able to maintain about 20 knots with uh, full thrust. All right. Um, 
you know, I can uh, full autopilot already set up in here, so this will really help us to get um, ourselves going here. And so I'll put a couple waypoints and uh, walk around a little. I'll walk down to the engine room. So as you can see, I can add waypoints, and it will automatically stop when I get to the last waypoint. So all that is really great for um, all that's really great for the our ability to go do some work. And so here I'll activate it here in a second. I think this is heading hold, but I haven't labeled it yet. So we should turn that on, and as you can see, rudders automatically go. Already has its stability systems in. The main thing is it has a stability system for the crane. We can deck load containers. You can see one of my videos. I deck load containers with this. Very pleased to get this in game. Uh, this is the whole reason why I started the career build series was I wanted to be able to play with uh, Triton. And we're, we're there. We're playing with it. So um, the plan is to get working on the electrical system. Once the electrical system is up and running, we're in business to go do some missions with this. And I, I didn't show you the cost of this. This costs about 160000 to spawn, just to spawn it. A lot of that's fuel. Um, when I bring this back in the base, if I can remember, I want to show you the hull, the uh, interior hull design. I kind of based it off of real ships, and that's why it's kind of set up that way. But this will follow the autopilot. As you can see, the red line is our trend line, this one here. And that trend line will align with the waypoint, and then that will uh, bring us right there. Then it will auto stop. It will automatically stop the engine or stop the forward thrust once we get to our destination. So again, that will allow me to go fly away and go do some missions and have this operate. All right. And so let's go ahead and go down really quick to the engine room. All right, so I want to throw some XML panels in here now that I did a little bit with that. Um, Pony's IDE is really helpful. I'll, I'll show you that again at some point. Um, but again, I think it's going to be fun to get this ship into, into the career build series and get going. So uh, this is all my cooling system here. It's all functional. I have some more cooling hidden underneath um, in there. But they, it cools really well. Um, you need good flow rates. That's one thing where a lot of people struggle is you'll notice my outflows are up here. These are my outflows. If you have, that's what your fluid should look like. See how it's uh, 64, 64? Notice zero oscillation. It's not going up, down, or flickering. That's how you get good cooling is no oscillation. If we look here, uh, notice it's fluid in 73.8, 73.8 out. 64.5, um, 64.5. If you're stable like that, you will have good cooling. If you don't, you're not going to have good cooling. So that takes a little bit of work, but you can get something this big running really powerful, powerfully uh, good cooling. Let's go ahead and look at our uh, fuel manifold here. We are burning, um, ooh, we are much more fuel efficient than I remember. That's three liters per second. Okay. So, and that's less than three liters. That's 2.8 liters per second. That's um, so we're running six liters per second times 60. That is 360 liters per minute times 60. That is only $21,000 an hour. I thought we were double that. That's 21. We even went down as well, um, as you can see. And I and I'm going off three. So we're much more fuel efficient than those. Let's do it at 2.7. We can even be more. Uh, so let's see, 2.7 times 60 is um, $162 uh, a minute, essentially, times 60. And that's going to be 97, is that right? 2.7 uh, times 60. Uh, keep uh, hitting the wrong button, I think. 2.7 times 60, $162 per minute. And that's going to be um, 9700 Twenty dollars per hour. All right. Again, let's go. Uh, let's see. Let's go by 2.5 hours to the Arctic. That's twenty-four thousand dollars to go to the Arctic. One container will pay for this to go to the Arctic. All right. At full thrust. All right. So that's, you know, that is, uh, you know, I'll do a gearing tutorial. Um, you see, these are um, supercharged. I'm going to try to supercharge them some more, but uh, supercharge them and then downgrade them, essentially. So you can see we have our large gearbox here. Um, 
we're running, uh, let's, we can figure out our ratio. We're running, what are we running off? We're running about 6.8 RPS off the, off the motor. We're getting 20. Uh, this is probably a 3 to 1. These are beasts. These are supercharged 3 by 3s. I don't put 5 by 5s in anything, really. But, um, I need to paint that. That's where the Triton sign went. But, uh, yeah, so this is going to be really, this is even more efficient than I remember. Um, so it'll be a lot of fun getting this in game. This is going to really open up some opportunities to do a bunch of stuff. This is why we've been grinding money. This is why, even when I'm not really feeling it, we go and we do a, uh, a money maker of a mission. Is, you know, a lot of it is consistency. If you can consistently make money, you'll have money. And that's what I've been trying to do. So, um, some certain things I've been trying to do. Let's see if I can do it. Um, like this here, um, we want to be able to launch it. Um, while moving, and so, um, you know, we can do some things. Uh, again, a lot of this is screwed up because when they change the rope stretch, all the real difference is, is I have to set the value of essentially how much rope length I want, and I need to set that again. So all that is me resetting it to fix kind of them changing it. Um, let's see, let's start and stop engine six. I can't tell if it's on or not. All right, so this might need some work. Uh, nope, I, oh, I master power. And lights, master power. Because of this, this windshield, I have to get it right in the money or else I can't hit it. There we go. All right, so this is our little rescue boat. This is our main rescue platform. Um, I would love to put Vrijo on here, but I think Vrijo seems like not a big boat. Vrijo is a pretty big boat. Um, it's deceptively it's deceptively so. It really doesn't seem like all that big, but it is It is very big. So, um, you know, that's something that it doesn't really seem like it, but it is a large boat. So the way you would detach from here is you want to grab the rear um, rope anchor, detach it. I have empty wells on this side, very uh, ex exclusively for these ropes. Now, as you can see, we're being dragged along here. And so what we'll do is we'll start adding a little thrust And we'll just take a little pressure off the rope. And we took a little pressure off the rope. We'll grab it and we'll detach it. And as you can see, Triton goes off. We can go do our rescue. So this boat's not perfect. Um, it's not terribly fast. Uh, it's designed to go about 20 knots, which is what, which is what Triton goes. And so the point of this, it, I think this goes a little bit faster than Triton so that Triton can stay on autopilot going to a destination and we can very slowly catch up so we can go do a rescue mission as you can see we can get around say 25 knots to go uh, to go do our rescue and then come back I've actually I think I I think I published some videos of this doing rescues while Triton was off doing doing its good works um, on autopilot but um, kind of a good combo um, you know the parasite craft of this is kind of what makes it the ability to do that um, should be able to deck load the um, submarine, you know, so we can get the submarine back into gameplay. So a lot of the stuff I think will be a lot of fun once we um, once we can get this in and running. So again, it's just some electrical stuff. So I'm gonna probably off-screen work on some of the electrical stuff, get Triton's electricity up to snuff. As you can see, the helipad was designed for the hummingbird. The hummingbird needs some work uh, because of uh, what they did with cameras. And then once that kind of gets some work, we can um, we can use Katie did. We can use the um, the hummingbird. And so I'd like to get the hummingbird in a little bit. That was built for Triton, and I don't like to throw away my builds. So as you can see, we can do about six knots faster than Triton at full speed. This is very much purpose built for that reason. Um, I need a better stability system than this. Ooh, there we go. There we go. There we go. We're having problems here. Gonna reduce my thrust just a little bit. There we go. And uh, so let me see if I can't get this back on board. But very excited to get this in. This has been, you know, it's always good in these types of games to have goals. You know, people talk about getting bored, and I certainly understand that. But um, you know, by having a goal, it you know, every time you go out, if you have a mission, it makes it a lot more fun in my in my. Uh, 
experience. And so one of the missions, you know, you can have is just, um, you know, something simple like going out there and, um, you know, I want to do some rescues, but I want to make a little bit of profit. And if I can make some profit, I can get the home ship in. And so this has been one of the things that's kept me going and kept me um, really grinding for cash is that profitability, is I need to get enough money in, I need to do an oil trading mission, oh, I need to get out back on board before we hit that. Uh, okay, perfect, so we're here. Now what I do is I grab my um, rope hanger, I hook to there. If Oh my god, just grab the rope, you dope. He's already annoying me. All right, so as you can see, we're attached there. We then would attach to the rear here. And we attach there. As you can see, this is not that hard. I don't have any sort of fancy dancy autopilots on here. Um, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to keep that powered and I'm going to try to reach this. I keep hitting it, but I can't get it. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on. Don't be. I need to drop a little bit of speed here. Um, keep hitting the helm button. It's not doing it. So I dropped off a couple. Uh, come on, drop some speed. It's annoying me now. The, uh, the throttles aren't touchy enough on this. Like, I keep dancing. Ugh. So this tells me, oh, don't you dare do that. It's starting to, it was starting to go in. There we go. Okay, so that system, I, that needs to be moved down just where it's closer. But as you can see, I can pull this out. I can shut my motor off. Shut the power off. And then um, go ahead and we can push this in. And as you can see... While Triton is moving, we can uh, do rescues. And six knots is not a very fast closing speed, but that allows us to close in and uh, catch up. So this will eventually pull itself in. Again, the rope stretch is the problem here. Um, we had a rope stretch issue with the um, with one of the updates. I just have yet to uh, kind of con reconfigure and fix that. See if I can't get this to behave itself. There we go. Okay, so it's coming in now. I don't know why this prop is still going. I shut the engine off, so. Uh, yeah, nav mash power is off. Um, so this needs work as well, but again, you know, I didn't do too much work on these to get it on. But as you can see, um, and then we have a connector there, so. Yeah, I was trying to get that to reconnect here. Eventually that will reconnect. I don't want to get... Actually, I'm in my creative. I can't get killed, so... Always nice when you can't get killed. And then this will eventually reconnect, and then that will get us uh, all set there. But that will snap on. Um, as you can see, that will do that. Let's play with a couple more things, and I think we'll call it for a video. Uh, here's our crane. The crane is a lot of fun. I really enjoy the crane. Um four releases the lock and then uh, so this crane has a tilt sensor as I was saying on that head so as you can see as I tilt it up notice it auto orients all right and what the reason for this is I could just do it with no power to the pivot but this allows me to have uh, better control of my uh, containers and stuff so for example I can come in here and so this is my container uh, mover here and I have very good very precise control. I can easily deck load containers. Um, see, this was my container controller, or my container connector. And then everything I do is modular, so I can't remember the function keys, but um, nope. What's that? Nope. 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 Okay, so I forget what the expansion is on this, but there it is. Uh, I had it wrong. So as you can see, we can expand the carriage. This allows us to have a nice um, compact carriage for the containers. And then when I move it all the way out, like so, this will snap. I think it's actually I moved it too far out. It needs to be there for a container. But this will uh, this allows me to connect to a container. As you can see, I can rotate. So we can uh, raise this up. You can watch one of my videos. I um, it's actually a pretty popular video. I uh, I utilize this to load containers. So um, Triton can automatically, or automatically, 
Triton can deck load its own containers uh, with the with the Lebert crane. And so this allows ooh, I didn't see you there, son. I think you're gonna lose in the mass war here. I think I'm a little bit bigger. Um, so we can deck load ourselves five containers. I can actually double stack containers on this and Triton will barely tip at all. Like like imperceptible amounts of tip. And so I can double stack if I wanted. I won't double stack probably for RP reasons. And as you can hear, our engine stop because we are at, are at our final waypoint. So we did just a little circuit there. And so I can come in here and I can deck load Triton. As you notice, if we if I didn't have this auto leveling system that automatically has a facing down, uh, that would cause this to swing back and forth. And so by doing it this way, I can I can load more quickly. And so as you can see, I can deck load. You know that would be a double stack there. Then I would come over here and I would double stack over here. And then I put one container here and the reason for that one container is because I need the space for uh, the crane to be stowed. So let's quickly close this up. We'll finish up this video, but I'm really I'm excited about getting this in. So what, um, let me just show you the hangar really quick. And I, I can't, uh, I think there's a button on the deck. I'm trying to remember here. Um, Okay, so that's going to go there. Yep, just behave yourself for two seconds there, guy. Uh, what is it? One, no. Two, down. That's three, no. Um, I think I have a button to disconnect. I forget what my button is to disconnect. Um, again, I haven't used this in a while, but what I can do here is let me disconnect this. All right, and so what we'll do is we'll hook to... What am I... Oh, I'm still holding on to it. And it's like, why am I floating? All right, so let's go ahead and let's show you the module real quick, and I'll show you these hangar doors. So uh, we have some hangar doors. Now that I'm using my crane again, I really don't want to put a different crane on here. <laughs> I'm like, you know, I, I set this crane up for a reason the way it is. Um, I like it. I just want to, you know, I'll make it look a little better. So here's my winch module. So, again, I like modular stuff. Um, pain in the ass, though. That There we go. All right, so you can see I can sit that right in the deck here, and I can go back on my crane, and I can... Um, I can connect here to the uh, module. This is the winch module. And so for all my winching needs, I can hook to this. And it's modular, so I can use my function keys. All right, so that's hooked. And I'm just going to go here, and I need a rope. I'll just grab it out of something here. And so that is, I need to go up to get it closer. Um, I have a rope on this here. Grab a rope. I have rope blockers. I need to put some rope in there. But so that would attach to there, and then I don't know. This is the center here. I'm trying to remember where my toggles are. I think maybe this one. Okay, right here. Notice this door just detached. Uh, this one did too. So I have them both in the same detachment. So I'll show you both of them. So what we would do is we can go ahead and we can grab this panel up by doing this, and you'll notice the panel comes up. And you'll notice on a lot of sh uh, ships, you might see pictures, they have these, um, they will have panels, and that's how you gain access to compartments underneath. And so I can go ahead and I can place this wherever. Um, I'm just, I'm moving it all the way up here in the helipad just because the, uh, I want to open that other panel too. All right, and so that would go, um, say, on the deck there. And then what I would do is attach this rope here. And then so to stow this, that's what we can use the hanger for. As you can see, we can look down in our hanger. We'll go ahead and grab this. Oh, come on now. But a uh, very responsive crane, works really well, very strong. Um, all the things one might wish for in a crane. And so I think I'm going to do near side, so right there. And I will grab that there. And then we can stow this downstairs. So um, this allows us to not have to spawn this when we go somewhere. We can bring this with us. And so as you can see, we can drag this. Oop, I knew that was going to happen. Knew it, and I knew it. All right, so that goes down there into our um, 
as you see the modules hooked up that these function keys work and that goes and we could stow it right there inside of the um, the hanger so this goes down on the hanger and we can um, we can leave that there we can I can also load uh, like I put the um, Oh, what's it called? I forget the name of it. Um, Mud Skipper in there. Mud Skipper will sit in there. Mud Skipper also sits under there. So, um, you know, Mud Skipper will give us a nice ground vehicle. Um, now that we have our um, pickup truck, if I can get us close to enough to the shore, I can. Uh, we can load the pickup truck up up on here and bring it places. So, all these things are. Um, it's a lot of fun, I think, bringing your to bringing your toys along. And so I really like that. So that's uh, kind of part of the inspiration for this. And so this is mostly RP. And here, this is um, the engine bay. And so why this isn't... Oh, I'm, I'm paying out a ton of rope. Okay. Um, this is this this right here is the engine compartment. And so this is mostly for RP. In real life, you would um, you'd pull the panel. And then let's say you needed to switch out a cylinder sleeve or something... Uh, you could go ahead and you could do that, and you could switch out a cylinder sleeve for one of your cylinders. You could, you know, do load things in there, load in um, whatever you need, supplies, parts, and that kind of RP is in here. And that's why this area is clear here, is so that theoretically you could drop something down. You know, I'd say RP-wise, you could detach the staircase and um, go ahead and drop a, an engine part in here. And then I was thinking of putting some some kind of uh, simulated overhead gantry cranes but you know you take a cylinder head off you and then you send it up through so that's what those panels are for that's why there are those large gaps in the ceiling um, as you can see but um, yeah so I think this is gonna be really cool and a lot of fun um, you know there's a lot of work here uh, a lot of good stuff to do um, you know let's take this out I don't want this to be too long a video but I'm enjoying it and I hope you guys are enjoying it too this is like I said this is the culmination this is what I've been trying to get working on this is what I've been working so hard to make all that money for in uh, the career build series alright uh, is, is to be able to get this in game and so uh, we're close and so that's why I'm a little excited um, I think right here rope anchor I've already thought of a lot of this like that's where that rope sits and then, so we jump at our seat here. Let me go ahead and shut this. Um, all right. This looks familiar. This is from the other boat. Um, uh, and then, again, I need to um, change some things around. But this is our little lifeboat, and this should uh, theoretically, you know, if, if we have really stormy seas, this should be unsinkable as long as we don't open a hatch. Um, really need to work on having a good pumping system in here so because this is going to have issues um, right now the stability system is not but it has a stability system that might not be functioning right I don't know I haven't worked on this in a little while but again same thing here this one's much slower as you can see this is not a speed uh, do, am I thrusted up yeah this has to have a much smaller engine um, if I can get this up to 20 knots 25 knots that would be ideal just so that I keep Triton at full speed but this is more of a you know this is going out when the weather's rough so Triton's not uh, Triton could actually do 20 knots even in the worst conditions but um, I'd have to slow down to recover this um, you know so we, we don't have a ton of fuel we don't need it this is all our fuel um, this is to go out in rough seas so the point of this is you're not going to be driving all over town with this the point is you want to get Triton close you want to launch your lifeboat, and then we can go and rescue people in this. So we have a bunch of different things. This is really going to make um, it make, make it really fun for some some cool gameplay. Getting us in there with that silence alarm. We have these are all our alarms. Spotlight we have on there. So this is just kind of a cool little um, lifeboat that will um, you know allow us to go do some re more rescue stuff. And again, a lot of the stuff I need to kind of update it to my new my new drive systems where I essentially use uh, up, down, left, right, and um, WSAD to control. Oh, we're in reverse. I put it right in reverse. Okay. And that stuff's a little bit of tuning just so that it doesn't do that. But as you can see, uh, you can see water pumping out the side. That is our, um, you know, like I don't even have space bar as my uh, zero... That's, I have a button there. 
which is kind of the old way I used to do it. So I uh, get this close to the rescue zone. So these all need to be updated where they're a little bit more controllable. I started to talk about it, but I think I forgot. It's like, you know, um, Rigeau doesn't seem like a big boat, but Rigeau is pretty big. Rigeau is about 40 feet, you know, and so that's pretty large. And so, um, you know, that, that what's that? It's about... It's over 10 meters. I think it's 13 meters is how long Vigeau is. Um, yeah, I think it's at least 13 meters. And this boat here is 55, 53 meters, something like that. So, you know, it's a considerable uh, length uh, Vigeau, and so that really makes it tough um, to be able to utilize that for um, all of our you know, rescue needs. I'm just going to go out the front hatch so you can see that as well. So we jump on the padded seats. And then, as you see, we can go out here. Um, we have some all our gear for rescues here. Um, oh, come on, man. Just get out of there, you scum. All right, there we go. And so I'll probably change this out for an electric hatch. And if we're in rough conditions, ideally I'd like to go to the top hatch in rough conditions. But, you know, I can play around with this, try to make it work a little bit better. But uh, we have these nice low platforms here, which allows us to, um, even in rough conditions, to get back on Triton which is, uh, as you can imagine, very important. So it's it's kind of, um, you know, luckily a lot of things are done on this, um, and I can get it in. And then so um, this is all set on distance, so, you know, this should be very tolerant to us doing things like this, where I try to winch it up, um, even if it's off, especially this one. This one's not going to swamp. I'll let that connect, and then... We have the uh, man overboard boat. Man overboard boat, a very simple, not great boat. Um, you don't want to be taking this out in crazy conditions. And, and it's really, it's not great mainly because the only way you can get something like this to float is have an air ballast in there. And we can't have a ton of air ballast just because it's so tiny. So I can't really step on this and screw around. As you can see, I have to pretty much jump right in the seat or else it does that. And so it's not the end of the world. Um, this is mostly RP and for show, and so we can recover this if I at attach the rope like that. So this is all been tested. It's pretty pretty um, resilient to my nonsense. As you can see, this should be fine. We should be able to get this back on board pretty easily. Um, and then this has to go through its cycle. So it's going to cycle itself. It's going to reattach. As you can see, that auto reattached. I'm glad this will go back both ways. Um, I'm stuck in the uh, in the equipment locker here. And then, so let's put this back out. And so this is just a little electric boat. It connects uh, there, and it recharges its electricity via Triton systems. Let's drop this down. And so what we would do is we would uh, d disconnect, jump in our seat, and then this is just electric. So this is very rudimentary, very basic, uh, if I can even remember how to control this. I think it's one and two. I didn't go into the... Pr yep, so see here we can uh, control it. It has a little faked outboard that's just, um, you know, has a single small electric motor in there. So it's pretty basic. It's not fast. Um, it's not meant to be... It's not meant to be crazy, it's just meant to be a little man overboard boat, maybe a small rescue in calm seas, but this does not like, uh, this does not like really crazy seas. And we, I have infinite electricity on, so it's not using any battery, but see, we can do 18 knots, 20 knots in this. So it's not a bad little boat, um, just not great, as you can see, you know, it's, um, we're just quickly done. You know, they're placeholders. They need some love. And so it's one of the things that kind of interests me and excites me in getting into this is um, all this stuff is going to need to be made better. I've um, I've made a lot of my stuff better um, as I've kind of progressed through the game. And so I'm going to take what I've learned, and we're going to make all this stuff better. And, again, you really don't know what you need in a build until it gets in um, – until it gets into a career game where you realize, hey, this boat is absolutely useless. You know, which how many times does that happen where we realize, you can see, see how useless this boat is. I knew this boat was useless. This is just a, this has one job, and that is to be a man overboard boat. Um, that's it. And so these all need to act a block so they can move away from, from Triton. Uh, 
KD did, should fit on there fine. Uh, let's see, I'm struggling here. This thing can go away. Um, and I'll just quickly go over the helipad, and I think we'll call it a video. i um, really looking forward to this. I'm very excited about this again, getting into this. Um, so I left this this crap on top here. Can I get there? Yeah, get out of the way, please. Thank you. Um, come on. Go, 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 go. So there's our helipad. I'm going to add the locking system that um, we have on the um, our helipad at home base. Um, so that will be on here. And then, as you can see, these will go down. So that will these will be also controlled by that distance sensor that tells us we're um, over the pad. So these will only go down as we're landing. Then once we land, it will automatically these will automatically come up. And so these have already been tested. Um, you can have containers loaded here; they don't interact with containers. So all this stuff is uh, nice and tested. So this will be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to this. I'm really looking forward to getting into this and uh, playing. And so um, I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. And so we're gonna be we're gonna be people of the sea for a long time with this. You know, we should be able to put this out and uh, get this going for a while. Let me just bring it back to the workbench. Want to show you a couple last things, and that will be it. So Triton's going back to the workbench. Let me just do a quick save. I want to make sure I have the latest version of this. Um, as you can see, all my performance warnings. Um, I was talking about it in the last video. I don't build, I don't do multiplayer. I don't build for, um, maybe I, maybe that was the video I cut, but I don't build for multiplayer. I don't, my stuff's built for single player. It's not going to be, you know, you can't run this and a bunch of crap in a multiplayer game and expect to get good results. So anyways, let's look at them. Um, so I, I try to use real life ships again. They're not going to be perfect, but I try to use real life ships to kind of see um, how to build. And so if we look, you know, a lot of people wonder, you know, how I get a stable boat. A lot of people ask how I get where I can crane things on. And unfortunately, I painted a lot of this black, which I've been told not to do because it's um, it's very tough to see. Why is that all black? What is all this? Okay. Oh, it's you know what it is. It's cutting the exact center of the ship. I have a center rib so that the water can't run all the way to one side or the other. But let's let's kind of look at a cross section here of the ship. So this is all empty va vacant space. That's going to stay there. Um, that's where all our anchor systems. So this is all simulated chain locker. Um, that's where we climb up the staircase and we go in here and that's our simulated chain lockers there. Uh, this here is our systems are going to be some systems area. Um, in here is our hangar. In here is um, our engine room back there. Um, we have our staterooms here. We have our uh, communal area. We have our bridge. Pretty simple there. Let's go ahead and move this um, side plan. I'll kind of talk to you about um, talk to you about how I build a ship and how how it might. I'll give you some tips essentially. So if we look here, I have um, two levels. So this here, this bottom level here, as you can see, this is the lowest we can go down to. As you can see, that's the lowest rudiment or lowest floor. Now, by having all the space, it allows me to do something like this. Look at this. This is all weight blocks. All right. So I can put all these weight blocks in here, and that allows me to balance my ship out. So the the stern here, as you can see, that's all weight blocks, man. Or, you know, it's not all weight blocks. This is all air in here. But you see, I have a lot of weight blocks stuffed in the rear here. And so that is to balance out the ship because this rear, as you can see, is big, square, open air. All of this is good, really good buoyancy, especially back here. You notice there's not much weight up top, a lot of buoyancy. So we need a lot of weight to counteract that. Up here, we have a lot of um, heavy, high areas. So we need to make sure we get that center of gravity low again, why we do that. And so instead of doing weight blocks, what I do here is I do water ballast. So this is my water ballast tank. So we have two tanks um, this size in the bow. And we have two tanks this size in the stern. And that, that concludes our four ballast tanks. And so those will automatically modulate um, to keep us at water line. So our water line is always there. Above that, I have my fuel tanks. Uh, the reason you do this in real life is if you were to puncture your ballast tank, you don't want your, de your uh, fuel oil to leak into the ocean. So you you put water first and then fuel. 
And so we have a lot of fuel in here. I think we have like 150 something thousand liters of fuel. That's one of the reasons why this costs 497,000 to uh, spawn is most of its fuel weight or its fuel cost, I think. Um, but as we use fuel, we're going to add on ballast water. And so we can add water here. It does it automatically. Uh, in the center here, you'll notice right under the crane, we have a weight. This is the counterweight system. I actually have a video on this. Um, this is annoying doing the split stuff. So as you can see here, I have a large counterweight. This slide, this is how we counterweight for both uh, rolling of the sea and for the crane. This is how I can load containers and not have the ship tip. Plus, as you can see, the ship is very large. It has a lot of mass. Ship weighs 114,777 weight. That's how much the ship weighs. All right, so a container weighs, what, 2,000? So uh, this ship weighs, you know, enormous amounts more. Five, at least five, no, what is it? Yeah, five, what is it? Maybe eight times what what a container weighs. Plus, you have this large uh, moving counterweight. So as the container, as we pick up a container on the port side, the counterweight shifts right automatically. As we move it, that moves back and forth. That keeps us both stable, and that keeps us there. We have our folding mast here. That allows us to get under bridges. We can get under any bridge, um, no problem. Um, as long as we are at waterline, we can get under bridges with this folded. And so this gives us great versatility with this ship. So I'm very excited to bring this into the world and the gameplay. Um, currently, our problem is uh, electricity. As you can see, um, I need to get the electrical system plumbed up. As you can see, a lot of stuff, uh, a lot of this is nonsense. It's equipment lockers. I don't even know what this is. This looks like, um, yeah, they're headboards for the beds. Like, those don't need to be connected. Um, but... As you can see, a lot of the stuff is not connected to anything. And so what's going to happen off screen is I'm going to go through and I'm going to connect things up properly. Um, you see all these circuit breakers? I've started the process. As you can see, uh, main power is connected to the separate buses. I'm going to connect this like a, real, like a real vehicle, like a real ship would be. These relays are going to be used. These relays are actually going to work for things. All these essential breakers are going to be essential. We're going to need these on. Non-essential systems are all going to be powered. Everything is going to be segregated into systems and work properly. It's going to take me a little time, but I'll get it set up. And once the electricity is ready, as you can see, the ship functions very well already. I just need to get the electrical systems up and running. Once the electrical system is up and running, which I'll do off screen, we should be able to get this in and actually utilize it. And as need be, I will go ahead and uh, take it back in the workbench and do some work on it. But we still need a little bit of money as well. So... Um, hope you guys enjoyed seeing the home ship. This is what a lot of this has been about for me, is getting this in-game, getting this going. Um, this is going to be a labor of love, getting this, this thing up and running and in-game. So I, I hope you enjoy the video. Uh, if you liked the video, please give it a like. If you enjoy my content, please consider subscribing. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye.